I see in the spirit of one that came. And there may be several, but specifically one. And this is what the Lord says. You have lived too long tormented in your soul. You're not guilty. Because of your response to me, and I saw you at my feet within your heart this day, you're not guilty anymore. It's all washed away. Stop taking back what I bought. I bought you. I've healed you. Now you have a purpose and plan, says the Lord. It's good. You're not guilty. I took all of your pain, all of your sorrows, all of your past. That's why what I touch becomes new, brand new. I see the number 12. And the number 8. God says to tell you, this day you have authority and dominion. And beginning this day is a new creation. It's new beginnings for you this day. The Lord says you will walk out of this place today with a brand new beginning. Just don't look back. I also saw in the spirit a red like a, a painting, like a red, uh, a red devil's head was outlined in black. Like you would see on an advertisement or something. Or maybe a tattoo or something like that. A tattoo, a, an advertising, or something that reminds you of a past. And the Lord says that there is nothing that the devil can do to harm you anymore. That is a word for someone in here this morning. Of what I saw should be a confirmation to you. There is nothing that the enemy can do to hurt you anymore. Nothing. Jesus said, I've given you all authority and power over the evil one and over the demonic. I see a left lung this morning. I'm just going to speak it like I see it. I see a left lung this morning, and I see clouds in that lung. And God's beginning to blow His breath into that lung, and it's being healed right now. It's being healed right now. The Holy Spirit is touching you today. Your only part is just, I receive, Lord, and be grateful. I receive, Lord, and be grateful. says the distractions will totally dissolve as your response to me this day you've been distracted too long I'm here to bless you Lord Jesus we thank you Thank you for your presence here. Thank you for your glory here. The atmosphere is changing now. For the Spirit of the Lord is here. The evidence 
is all around that the spirit of the Lord is here the atmosphere is changing now for the spirit of the Lord is here Lift up our voices right now. Let's honor the Lord. Come on, let's honor the Lord. Sister Lee, you and Butch. and give the Lord a, a mighty praise. Let's just have a praise break right now and thank him for all that he is. He deserves our praise and our glory and our honor. Let's just praise him, church. Praise him for he is worthy to be praised. He is worthy to be praised. We do exalt you, Lord. Oh, what a beautiful, beautiful verse. We exalt you. We exalt you. We exalt you. We just wanted to come to you this morning, and we apologize for the short notice, but, you know, God's timing is perfect. Amen. His, his timing is so perfect, and um, if you've ever wondered what a wonder is, 
Uh, we have witnessed this week God's wonders so miraculously. And um, he has worked <laughs> unbelievably fast in doing this. And uh, we just want to invite you. You may not understand fully what's going on. We, we really won't un <laughs> we don't understand all of it ourselves. But we just want to invite you to come tonight to our home. Many of you were there when we, on Mother's Day, had a church service um, together uh, out in the field next to our house, and it was so powerful. And ever since then, um, that's where, that's been my place to go and pray and be with the Lord. And uh, so many days that I would go, the Lord would speak to me about that we needed to have more services there. And then Butch and I began to watch the stand at the River Church in Tampa, Florida. We, we've been watching Rodney Howard Brown for some time uh, on different occasions. But he had a vision to start the stand there um, when all this started in our country about uh, the pandemic and coronavirus. And, and the God, gave, God gave him a vision to, um, to open up the back of their church. Um, it was concrete. It was just a parking place. And um, they put down uh, uh, artificial grass and it's it, once you see it, if you haven't seen it it's just miraculous what all they've done it's a beautiful place but I believe tonight will be night 94 that they have gone consecutively having church services and it's just amazing thousands and thousands of lives have been touched there but this is broadcast of in <laughs> hundreds of thousands it's, it's broadcast all over the world uh, to countries all over the world. And it is a stand. If you've seen my T-shirt, the back of my T-shirt stand says, we stand for liberty. Amen. We stand for the power of the gospel. Yes, amen. We stand together. Yes. We are the church. Yes. And that's what they stand for. And I know that's what we stand together for as uh, the Solid Rock Church. And so um, we invite you to come tonight. It's going to be... <laughs> We're so fortunate to, uh, we just made a phone call and we told them that we wanted to uh, have our own stand here in Haleville. And the reason we called them was to just, we didn't want to do anything that would um, be out of the way to uh, go against any, I mean, you know, we didn't want to go against a copyright or anything like that. And they were so welcoming to us and they said, hey, we'll get it together. And y'all, this Sunday night, the first Sunday night of every month, we partner with other churches and you can live stream with us and and be involved with our service. So that's what's going to happen tonight out in the field next to our house. So at 6 o'clock when you come, we will begin their broadcast. Now, they're, of course, it says 7 o'clock Eastern time. They're in Tampa. They're an hour ahead of us. And so it will be at uh, 6 o'clock at our home, 3521 Littleville Road. And um, it's Rod, Pastor Rodney Howard Brown will be uh, speaking and um, they'll have praise and worship before. It's a long service. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you. And, but don't worry. We're going to have plenty of food. We're going to have plenty of drinks. And uh, bring your lawn chairs. If you don't want to get out of your vehicle, you don't have to worry about it. We have an FM transmitter. You can sit in your car, and you'll be able to see and hear the entire service. We have a 20-foot screen that you'll be able to see. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and warn you. Uh, we, we practiced last night, and at 6 o'clock, you couldn't see it on the screen yet. But when the sun da went down, you could. So we're go you can hear it. Yes, so you will be able to hear it. <laughs> we have huge speakers out there, and you'll be able to hear it. So what we're going to do is praise and worship with them the first hour, because they, they do praise and worship for a long time. And out in that field, let me tell you, it, um, it's a beautiful place to worship the Lord. And so uh, please come. But the most important thing you can do, church, is invite someone. I, again, I, I know it's short notice, but surely there's someone, surely there's one person that you can invite to come. This is Labor Day weekend. Maybe there's somebody, a neighbor, uh, a friend that you go to school with, a, a co-worker that might not have anywhere to go. They're going to get a free meal. They're going to hear the word of God. They're going to be able to praise the Lord in a, in a beautiful place that we've been so blessed with to share with you. We're so, so, so thankful. And so um, we just want to invite you to come. Let me just share with you just a, one, one more second that the Lord has put on my heart. These are the things that we are to do because this is going to continue after tonight. Our plan is to have it on Wednesday night as long as 
Pastor still agrees on Wednesday night that we will have it there. We have internet service. That's one of the miraculous things that the Lord provided. You know, you don't call, you don't call and, and um, Freedom Fiber comes out to your house the next day and installs the internet. Let me tell you, that's exactly what happened. We called one day and at 7 o'clock the next morning they were dropping the line. And they, we, we had it in our home, but we didn't have it in the pool house. If you've ever been to our house, they were dropping the line there so that we could have it out in that field because our internet service in our home was not enough to extend out there. We had it in one day. That's the Lord. We give him all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. And that's just one thing. That's just one little bitty thing. I mean, he has done so, so much for this to even be able to take place. But on Wednesday night and Sunday night, we're going to continue this. And it's not going to be every night that you come with the river. We'll have our own praise and worship, our own uh, speakers to come. We'll have our own prayer, our prayer time. And there's three specific things the Lord has spoken. That we are to praise and worship together. We're to pray. You know, we have a very important election coming up in just less, less than 60 days now that will change the course of our lives forever. And it's very, very important that we pray for that and for our country and uh, for healing. And so those two things. But most importantly, he said, Lee, the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ, I want it to be spoken here. For salvation because there are so many people that do not know me and I want you to speak the word so that others will will know me so that they will be saved you know I look across this congregation and I know that I would <laughs> venture to say all of you know the Lord you all have a personal relationship with the Lord so when you come come knowing that it's going to be a message now I don't know what Dr. Rodney Howard Brown will preach tonight but but when whoever, it'll be good. You'll be blessed. But uh, from the other messages, that's what the only instruction that we will give is that it's to be a message of salvation because we want to reach the unreached. We want to reach those who are not saved because let me tell you, folks, I don't know when. Jesus doesn't even know when. But I think you can feel in your spirit that it's not too long. The Lord's coming back. And when that trumpet blows, nobody's going to have time to call Pastor Benny. They're not even going to have time to hit their knees and ask the Lord to forgive them. Now's the time. The two-minute warning is here. we got to do it now. We can't wait another day. So, I ask you to come tonight. Uh, I ask you to be patient with us. This is new. You know, in uh, technology, sometimes we, we're believing that it's going to be perfect. But uh, we want to see all of you there tonight. And please invite someone to come. And you've seen, uh, I think you've seen it on our Facebook page, the Solid Rock Facebook page. Please feel free to share it and ask your friends to share it. Um, that's the quickest way we can get the word out. Um, anything? The church is under attack. Abortion clinics, package stores can be open, but they're trying to sh shut the church down. So we're taking a stand. We're taking a stand. Who does the stand that's at our house belong to? It belongs to God. It's not a Butch and Lee. It's not a solid rock. But it is a Butch and Lee. It is a solid rock. And it's that church and that church and that church. It's a community. It's the area. Because what we want to get over is if we ask someone, if you went home tonight and took your last breath, where would you spend eternity? They have a choice. And we want them to know and so if they and the lord wants to bless people he wants to bless all of his people you cannot receive a blessing that you don't even know about how are you going to know about it through the word how are you going to build your faith from hearing the word that's what we're doing out there 
We're asking for everyone to be involved, not just here, but outside. Yeah. We want to go in Gore's parking lot and ask everybody that's out there to be involved. Amen. It's an area. This is for God and to hear His Word. Amen. And um, so we ask you to... I'm excited about it, and I hope you are. We're going to have fun. It's going to be good. I just have one verse of Scripture I want to read because every time I think about the stand and what's on this shirt, I'm, I'm reminded of this Scripture in Ephesians, and you've heard it many times. But I just want, to, want you to think about this when you think about the stand. And, and we, we humbly ask for your prayers for us. Um, We only want to do what we hear our Father tell us to do. And we know we can count on our church family to pray for us, and so we ask you to do that. But in Ephesians 6, 10, the Word tells us a final word. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all the strategies of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world. against mighty powers in this dark world and against evil spirits in heavenly places. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so that you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will be able to stand, still be standing firm. Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth and the body of armor of God's righteousness. For shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news so that you will be fully prepared. In addition to all these, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. Put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. We look forward to seeing you tonight, 6 o'clock. If you have any questions, you know our number. Bring a chair. Bring an appetite. If you want to wear a mask, wear a mask. Bring your Bible, yeah. Bring your Bible and bring a friend. We love you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen. Amen. Pastor Daniel, can you turn me up just a little bit? Just turn me up in my mic just a little bit. Wow. Hallelujah. How many of you are excited in the house today? Amen. Uh, pastors. Kirsten and Skyler, would you come? And y'all come first. Everybody keep your seat uh, with the children and all. And we're going to call the kids up separate today. Uh, so, okay, all of you kiddos that want to go to Children's Church today, if you're age 8 through 12, would you come on right now? Would you come on 8 through 12? Yeah, come on up, Dominic. Yeah, right here. You can stand. This is Kirsten. And this is Skyler. Yeah, yeah. If you're 8, 9, 10, 11, or 12. Yeah, yeah, y'all come on. Yeah, this is Children's Church Day. We're thankful to begin Children's Church again today. And they're going to have a great time. Amen. Let's stretch our hands toward our, our children and our children's pastors this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless them, O oh God. We pray that that uh, you open the eyes of their understanding, O oh Lord, and that your glory presence goes with them and remains with them and in them. And I, I'm thankful for, we're all thankful for our children's pastors. We ask that you bless them today as well. In the name of the Lord Jesus, amen and amen. Let's give them a hand as they go. Amen. Amen. 
Yeah. And now, if you're of the ages between three and seven, then if you're between the ages of three and seven, y'all come on up and you can go with Sister Bonnie, Pastor Bonnie, uh, ages three through seven. When Bonnie gets her shoe back on, then y'all can go. Wow. Let's, uh, y'all come on, kiddos. Yeah, y'all come on. Yeah, let's give those kiddos a hand. Good to see y'all. You got a big class this morning. Amen. Amen. Y'all come on. Let's stretch our hands toward these children this morning. And uh, Pastor Bonnie. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless our children this morning. We pray, Lord God, for your presence and impartation in their lives today. Bless our teachers with them as well, God, uh, for an anointing impartation today. We bless our children in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Y'all are dismissed. We'll see you in just a little bit. I just got a couple of announcements as they're exiting. Uh, hey, invite somebody and come over at Butch and Lee's house tonight. Amen? Yeah. This is an outreach. This is for the 17,000 people that I've been preaching about for 11 years here. Uh, you know, they just, they're, they're, they're not going to know and they're not going to come usually uh, to any building. They're just not. But let me tell you the good news. They're going to need a place to come after they get born of God's Spirit, amen, because they need to be discipled. And that's what we're beginning now with reopening up uh, uh, all classes and all Sunday school classes. Well, I'm, I'm in great hopes that we're going to open up uh, by the 20th of this month. Everything with the exception of Wednesday night services will be open up. Uh, but that does not uh, include the youth because the youth are going to begin meeting on September the 16th at 7 p.m. here. And then I've already met with Pastor Daniel Uyutes. Uh Y'all may be coming to uh, the stand event. Uh, and I'm just trusting our pastor, uh, Daniel, uh, to just be led of the Holy Spirit. So y'all may have some services here and importation here, but you're also... Uh, will be coming some of the, uh, the nights out, if not all the night. I don't know. We're taking this like one day at a time, one week at a time, to be led of the Lord Jesus, and I'm very, very excited about it. How about you? So your pastor, Utes, you Utes, uh, Pastor Daniel will be informing you as he hears from the Lord uh, about the Wednesday night services. But the Wednesday night service will start back for all Utes on September the 16th. Let me make sure that I covered everything. Yeah. Amen. How many of you feel like you're already full this morning? Amen. Good to see you this morning. And welcome to all of you that's joined us live via Facebook. Is anybody excited about what God's doing right now? I hope you get this. Is that uh, I, I want you to receive this this morning. It's time that, that we really put to rest that our past is over. Amen. Because, because if you don't, you'll always believe that you come up deficient in some way. If you've been born of the Spirit of God, Jesus, via the Holy Spirit of God, that's Jesus in you. That's what it means by being in Christ, lives in you. So, listen to me. When you... When you go, when you're praying for someone or when you're opening your mouth to witness for someone or witness to someone to tell them about the love of God, well, it's Jesus in you that is doing that. So when you lay hands on someone, I mean, this mentality that we've had so long within the church of America is that I'm just not worthy. I'm not worthy enough you know, to pray for someone, much less pray for somebody's healing or their salvation. But listen, Christ is in you, the hope of glory. 
Jesus lives in you. The power of God lives in you and I. So when you speak to someone and when you lay hands on someone, it's Jesus' hands that are touching them through your hands. And that's how impartation goes. So I want you to begin to know that it's the truth of the gospel. Yes, Jesus died for you and I. And he, feel, and he was raised from the dead for you and I so that we can live resurrection life. And it's not just fire insurance to get out of this world, you know, and, not, and, and don't go to hell. It is for a purpose. And the main purpose is to be a witness. So from this day forward, there is no longer, well, I can't witness. I'm just, I just don't feel worthy enough. Listen, if you've been born of the Spirit of God, He's made you worthy. He's made you holy. You're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And if you don't tell them, and if you, if you don't tell them, listen, I, I'm always about prayer. You ask the Holy Spirit to lead you, yes. But a lot of times it's an excuse for a lot of people. It's just an excuse. Well, I prayed about it and I didn't feel God, you know, led me to. Listen, you don't have to pray about this one. Jesus said, I send you out as my witnesses. You're the light and salt. And if you don't tell somebody, tell them what? Tell them about the love of God. Tell them about the mercy of God. Tell them about what Jesus has done for you. Because their lives are really our responsibility. Ooh. That's why God is in you and I. Listen, the king is in heaven. He is on the throne. You're His colony. You're the colony here of the kingdom of God on the face of this earth to change our culture by helping change people's lives. They got to hear from you and see the power of God in you. To heal the sick, to lay hands on the sick. Yeah, and I'm talking about youths. This includes y'all. Absolutely, every person under the sound of my voice, every church, every believer follower of Jesus, it's not a mentality that, that anymore, anymore, I hope and pray that this begins to stop today, that you know, I'm just an old sinner. Saved by grace. That used to be you, but it's not you anymore. You used to be a sinner, but you are a saint now. Every single one of you. That's the power of grace. That's the power of God. That's the anointing of God upon mine in your life. Call forth for such a time as this. I believe we're going to see multitudes of people saved. Amen? Amen. Are you excited? Week before last, I preached a sermon about consider your ways. I hope that if you didn't hear that, that you go back and receive. I'm not going backwards into that sermon today. A very powerful one that spoke about the people of God. And it so mimics what's going on right now with the church in America. For about 50 years... And I could give you a lot of reasons why. I'm not going to go there. Just believe me. I saw this happening. I've lived long enough to see it transpire. Is that the church began to make people comfortable and not sending them out to witness anymore. And all of a sudden, church service became about you and I and our comforts in this, in this life. And I'm not talking about God's blessings in your life because God wants you to be blessed. He wants you to be happy. Did you know we're supposed to be the happiest people in the world? I mean, even in the darkest of times, God has called you and I to be the people that makes lemonade out of lemons because of the power of God that's in you and I. You are a special person to God. You're a priest or a priestess of God. This is not strange. It's in the New Testament in the book of Hebrews. So can you look at somebody and point at them and say, you're special. Oh, come on, act like you believe it. Come on. Now turn and look at the other and say, you're special. 
Well, you can look at me if you want to instead of looking at that empty chair. <laughs> Listen, it's time. You see, too long we've heard, we've, uh, we've heard either so much of the kind of a gospel that you can sin and do anything you want to, and it's okay with God. And then we've heard a gospel like you just ain't never going to be good enough. That there's so many things that you must do. Listen, my friend, all you got to do is surrender to Jesus and accept Him as your Lord and Savior. He, he is willing and able to restore your life. We've all, we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. Amen. But did you know what? I know the Savior and so do you that's able to overcome anything of your past and give you a brand new life. Can somebody say amen and give Jesus some praise? God's message today, and I guess if I would entitle it, is now is the time run with the vision. Now is the time and run with the vision. Now is the time and run with the vision. But how are you going to respond to this? Listen, in Haggai 2 and verse 4 and 5, it says this, But now the Lord says, Be strong, Zerubbabel. And Zerubbabel, I'm just going back and getting a few little seed here from the last message and then getting right into the message of today. Be strong, Zerubbabel. Why in the world would your preacher say that today? Well, Zerubbabel, for such a time as this, because the same thing was going on in Haggai's time. They had just been delivered from 70 years of captivity. You've been delivered from, from the captivity of the enemy. And then there was work to do. They had started rebuilding their lives by rebuilding the temple of God. And then in a very short time, they began to be disinterested, discouraged, and dissatisfied with the things of God does it sound like today well not this group of people amen can you say my amen if that 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 doesn't mean you you're not that way this morning and I hope that there's others out here listening this morning you see Zerubbabel means uh, to scatter seed to bear fruit using a winnowing fork in other words this is to be about exactly what Jesus has called you to do to scatter the seed of the Word of God and those seeds will bring forth fruit to the kingdom of God. And it goes right along with what Sister Lee was saying this morning. Be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. And also be strong, Joshua, which means salvation, scattering seed, for the production of fruit in people's lives by being born again. And it speaks of salvation. The gospel message of salvation must go out. <coughs> well, I've heard that before, Pastor. Sure, the reason you've heard that before is because you are the saved. But what does the saved sheep do? Sheep are the only people that can are the only creatures that can beget sheep. Did you ever see anything else that can make a sheep? It don't happen that way, does it? Then it's about high time that God's people begin begetting sheep. That is our purpose. That is our calling. And let me tell you something, my friends. That's our joy. That's, there is nothing like it when an invitation is given and the gospel of Jesus has been preached that a person surrenders to the Lordship of Jesus and their life is made whole. God didn't mean to save you and make you miserable. And why would God save you and not give you His Spirit to equip you to do what you could not do for yourself? Oh, hallelujah. Man, His grace and mercy is immeasurable. He's a good God. He's a good Father. He loves you. It's time we get excited about the gospel of salvation and sharing that with everyone that we meet. And if somebody's struggling, tell them the gospel anyway. Lay your hands on them. You know, one of the assignments 
was to cast out demons. They may be somebody that you come in contact with. Now, you don't have to go looking for a demon, okay? And this is not a call to go out. No, the gospel of salvation is number one. But no matter what you come in contact with, you don't have a right to judge anybody. Nobody, period. But I'm going to tell you, if there's a demon entity there, it will show up. And all you got to do is in the power that God's already given you and I is you bind that enemy by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and command him to go and loose that person in Jesus' name. And if you're walking in your power and authority, you know that the Holy Spirit powers in you because He is. It's the truth of God. Then you have the power not only to lay hands on people and see people get healed, see people be saved by the gospel of the salvation that you tell them, but also to cast out demons. Can I get an amen here this morning? Come on. Come on. And now... The word of the Lord says, be strong all you people left in the land. That is you and I. And now it's time to go to work. For I'm with you, says the Lord of heaven's armies. My spirit remains among you. Is anybody, can anybody testify to that this morning? You feel the presence of God on your life and in your life this morning? Is He not here this morning? Is Jesus not real to you this morning? If, he, if you don't feel His presence this morning, and you don't have to feel every time, but you ought to know that Holy Spirit is here. He's on you. He is in you. And the glory of God is in this house this morning. Amen. Amen. The Lord says, don't be afraid. Be strong in the Lord and the power of His might, which is the Holy Spirit. And now it's time to go to work. For I'm with you, says the Lord of heaven's armies. You, you, you. He means you. I'm with you, saith the Lord. So God is calling all of us as the body of Christ, not only here at Solid Rock, but the body of Christ at large, the Ecclesia of God, right here in Winston County, Alabama, to come alive with the gospel-saving power of Jesus Christ and be the light and the salt of God that He's called you to be. Amen. People's lives are counting on you. And if you don't tell them, who will? God is calling you and I to wake up from the uh, dreadness and the unfaithfulness and return to the things that really matter. Come on. The things that really matter. So we must consider our ways. In Proverbs 19 and 18, the Word of God says where there is no vision, which another word for that is revelation or divine guidance, another word. The people of God perish. Or they cast off restraint. And that means they start running wild doing their own thing. In other words, go back to a dead life or start living by the flesh. Listen, Holy Spirit of God lives in you. You're never again supposed to follow the flesh. Why in the world would you even want to follow the flesh when the power of God is within you? It is the kind of wine that you get drunk on. The power of the Holy Spirit. It don't come in a bottle. It don't come in a glass. It don't come in a mixed drink, my friend, it comes in God's presence. Hallelujah. It comes by the Holy Ghost power in you and I. But if what does it take, Pastor, to get drunk in the Spirit? You just get in God's presence. And I'll tell you that the power and the anointing that lives on the inside of you and I, it's a river of living water will begin to flow out of your body. And you know why the purpose of that? It's not only for you to get high. It is, it is for other people to experience the river to get in the river of God themselves. Hallelujah. You know, I'm, I, I've been set free by the power of Jesus Christ. I was once an alcoholic. I was once a drug addict and a whole list of black dark things. Hallelujah. But when He set me free, I didn't need the highs of the world. I didn't need the highs of the devil. When you get in God's presence, uh, you don't need it anymore. There's not a better high than being on the high of God's Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. 
You know, we've been preached to water down gospel for too long in the United States of America that we come in with our dignity, that we come in, oh, preacher, don't preach that because it makes me a little bit uncomfortable. I'm going to tell you, when you ain't right with God, it's going to make you uncomfortable for one reason, not to reject you, but to call you into God's presence. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, there's nothing like being in the presence of God. There's nothing like being baptized in the Holy Spirit and being refilled over and over and over and over again and again. The Christians in the book of Acts were filled again and again and again. And what happened with them is they had the anointing. They had the boldness. And all of a sudden, not only were their lives shook up, they shook every place they went and even shook buildings. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We are God's people. We have been given His vision and assignment. Oh, but tell me what's in it for me. Let me tell you what's in it for you. You already got it. If your name's written in the Lamb's book of life, what Jesus has done for you is enough. He don't have to do nothing else for you. It's enough. Hey, listen. If you died today, heaven is your home if you're born of the Spirit of God. What else could Jesus do for you? That's enough. Calvary is enough. The death is enough. The stripes and the beatings were enough. The blood He shed, the precious blood that brings you your help and deliverance is enough. But also He was resurrected so that you could live the resurrected life and tell somebody about the Lord Jesus and His love. Woo! <laughs> Amen. You see, we've been given... God's vision and assignment for this church and the ecclesia at large. Ecclesia means the kingdom. God is about kingdom. God is not about denominations and splits. You're listening to me live. You have a problem with that? Go and read 1 Corinthians chapters 1 and 2. God's ecclesia must come together. And I'm going to tell you something else that's shocking. Whether you come together or not, God is still bringing His awakening, His reformation and revival fire. And if you don't get in on it now, you'll want to then. Amen? Amen. So why don't you take the step of faith now and receive what I'm about to preach this morning. I want to, God told me uh, uh, about two weeks ago, I want you to revisit the visions that I've given to my people here. In 2010, the Lord's vision was given in 2010. That's the year I became pastor here. I didn't have a clue what God's vision was. And let me say this, it wasn't about rebuilding a, a building or putting a high steeple on this building are are building anything other than people's lives and the vision that God gave us specifically here has never changed that's why I just updated it I had sister Susan to update it not long ago because I felt like that somebody else had a clearer vision than what God had given me in 2010 and the Lord chastened me for that and I gladly had her remove it and put it back up on our internet site but this was what the vision was in 2010 and it applies to each and every person under the sound of my voice doesn't matter this was specifically given to solid rock but it's also for the ecclesia of God the Lord's vision in 2010 was to image your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Number two was to renew your mind with the Word of God. Number three was to live a holy lifestyle and define yourself only by the Word of God.
Number four, the vision of the Lord says to walk in spiritual authority. Walk in your dominion and authority. Walk in your dominion and authority. Led of the Holy Spirit and to win souls and make disciples. This was almost 11 years ago. Well, it is 11 years ago. And next was support Matthew 25 ministries, orphans and widows. And that's what we do here. And next was to radically love the Lord God with all of your heart, mind, body, and soul. To love one another. Which excludes griping and complaining and judging one another. And voicing your opinion that's negative, that's hidden somewhat subtly on Facebook. When the Word of God says, if you're offended... Or if somebody offends you, you're to go to that person in them alone so that both of you are restored and radically forgive one another. And lastly, God's vision was calling all of us to an intimate prayer life and a walk of humility, an intimate prayer life, and a walk of humility, an intimate prayer life, and a walk of hu humility. The second vision for this church and this region was given by the Lord on January the 4th of 2018. During a time of prayer and fasting, the vision spoke of God's awakening, reformation, and revival fire, that tre a tremendous unbelievable harvest of souls and great change within Winston County and the surrounding counties in the North Alabama region would just change everything. Do you still believe it? Yeah. The vision speaks to all of us. The church body of Christ. The vision and the word of the Lord is for every person. For the salvation, restoration, and recovery of those that have not received Jesus as Lord are the ones that lost their way or they don't know the way. God is counting on you. You're responsible. I'm responsible. That don't mean guilt or condemnation on you. It's a joy to witness for the Lord. That's why so many people feel like they've lost their joy. They're not witnessing for God anymore. You see, God is still calling the church of this region to deep repentance. Deep repentance, prayer, fasting, and radical love for God and one another. And I want to share that vision again. I've got a, a, a young believer follower of Jesus that's doing an artistic drawing of this. And if we can get this together, I want to put it on something big so that you can see that this was not Pastor Benny's vision. This was God's vision to His church. And I'm talking about not just Solid Rock, but the church of Winston County, which has 130 churches in Winston, 54 churches in the Haleville area. Yet, over 17,000 people are not in a church building today. Either unsaved, backslid, or they don't really care. So we got a big vision from a big God. And you know what? That's the power within you and I. You see, the vision that I saw, which is God's vision on January the 4th, 2018, I saw, I see it as clear today as I did on January the 4th. I saw the Lord Jesus Christ. And He was standing, white robed. I could not see His face, but there was a glow and the glory of God just shined. And he was holding with his arms outstretched like this, the globe of the world. It was all in color. And that globe was turning slowly between the Lord's hands. And then all of a sudden, from behind the Lord Jesus Christ, just like coming through his body was the entire state of Alabama. It was as white as any white that I've ever seen. And every county in the state of Alabama was outlined in black. Every single county. I mean, and I'm not really a good geographical person, but buddy, I could, I could really pass the test that day. 
I saw Alabama like I've never seen Alabama before. And then all of a sudden, it was like a laser in Winston County was as green, the only county in Alabama that was as the luscious, most beautiful green color that I've ever seen in my entire life. And then amazingly, I looked up into the heavens and there was a huge, I mean a huge, humongous javelin like spear. It was large and it was silver. And there was a large silver spearhead. It was just huge. And, and tied to the end of it was a gold streamer. Long gold streamer. And it was like thrown from heaven with power and force. And it was like... Whoo! And then it hit right in the center of Winston County, Alabama. And all of a sudden, the end to all the green, amazingly, it was just like when that spearhead hit the county of Winston County, it woof and just flames of fire. The whole county was set ablaze with fire. And I'm like, wow, I mean, what am I seeing here, God? And then amazingly, when the whole county was on fire, the flames were red and yellow and mixed, and it was just like licking up all the air, every, the atmosphere, everything around it. And then out from under the county uh, of west, uh, uh, east, uh, south, and north, there was riders that came out. They were arrayed with body armor, like you would see like knights that was riding on... Uh, white horses and they had uh, body armor on. It, they were wearing the body armor. It was black and it was brown and they all started coming out from under Winston County and they was riding in all four directions and they all had, they was holding on to the horse uh, the, and there was a great cloud of smoke. It was just like smoke like you'd never seen that, that was rising from the horse's feet as they were riding victorious to take the land. And in their right hand, every rider had a big sword and they were swinging the sword. And then I heard the Lord say, Take the land! Take the land! Take the land! My friends, brothers and sisters, those people riding on those white horses are you. You and I, and God's commission is take the land. Take the land. Take the land. That's why the devil has stolen the land so easily over the last 50 years. Is that the church sat back and slowly by slowly did nothing but serve themselves. You see, the vision, God's vision speaks of His sovereignty. God Almighty is sovereign. He is the Lord thy God and He does not change. So if God doesn't change, guess what we do? <laughs> we let Him change us. He never changes because He don't have to. He is perfect. He is complete. And He will never stop loving you and I. He's in charge and his eyes are on Winston County in the state of Alabama for his mighty purposes. And therefore I decree and declare this day because of the vision that God has given the ecclesia of the church of Winston County and this region, there is no more separation and division of denominations and churches. No more, says the Lord. No more, says the Lord. And God says this, stop speaking evil of one another. Stop gouging one another. Stop acting like a country club. And start acting like my people, says the Lord. I mean, it makes me sick because it makes God's stomach sick that sometimes that we treat churches like country clubs and also we pick and choose the people that come. Jesus Christ never done that. Hallelujah. I want to say to the public today is that I don't care who you are or the background that you come from or the mess you're in right now. You are welcome at God's church right here at Solid Rock. You come. I don't care because Jesus don't care if you're a drug addict, if you're a whore, if you're a prostitute, if you're a male 
homosexual or a female lesbian, if you're drug addicted or whatever your problem, if you've got tattoos, piercings, it don't matter if you look like you've fallen into a tackle box. Jesus loves you. It don't matter if you ain't took a bath in six months. You are welcome in the house of God. It doesn't matter if what clothes you wear or if you're standing in the popular people. You know what that tells me? There's people right within our city that's not accepted in some of our area churches. And oh, if the other pastors hear me preaching that, well, it ain't me. Well, it ain't me. Listen, you don't know, Pastor. I've had people come here that asked me to pray for them because they were made felt like that they was not welcome in the church that you pastor. It's time. It's time to have an old time gospel repentance and call the people of God in that church back to an altar service. Amen. Get right with God. Jesus never picked out people and said, well, I think they're acceptable to me and you're not. I want you to read the gospel again. You read the gospel again. Listen, a woman taken in adultery, the very act of adultery. Guess who brings her the religious status quo of his day and throws that pitiful woman down at the feet of Jesus? You know what he did? Oh, he didn't pick her back up and said, you broke the law, give me a stone and let me rock her right here and now and kill this awful sinner lady because she's sleeping around committing adultery. Well, no, the religious folks of his day, probably one of them, had, or, or, or maybe all of them, they've been visiting her in the secrets of the night. They probably married and got their own wives and, and some babies and all, and they probably sleeping around with this woman themselves, but they, they, one of them got caught. So they're going to try to trick Jesus with bringing this woman to him. And you know what he does? He tells them, Hey, if you ain't got no sin, you just pick up the first rock and throw it at her. Because they was wrong in the first place. The Bible, if they were going to be correct with the law, they would have brought the man and the woman. But they didn't because the man was either one of them or one of their buddies. It was. Isn't that just like religion today? We make things so hard for people. Jesus said you make it the laws, you even add to God's laws. You make it so hard that you, you, that you turn people into a son of hell by your teachings. You, they, they, you so load them down with, with, with burdens that they cannot live. They're miserable because of you. It is time to stop making people feel guilty. They already feel guilty enough. It's time to start telling people about the love and the grace of God. You know, when somebody's born again, I don't have to tell them not to sin. They already know. Jesus just said, called us to be fishermen of men and women. That's all we're supposed to do. And lead them, yes, if they need help in a sinner's prayer, know what must I do? Because that's what they said on the day of Pentecost when they were pricked in the heart when Peter preached the gospel. I mean, you're talking about thousands of people and they just screamed out, hey, we're guilty. Oh, can somebody tell us what must we do? And Peter said, repent, every one of you, and be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall receive the same gift that we've just received, which is salvation and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Because the Word of God says it's for you and it's for future generations as well. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. That's what we need to be preaching. They already knew they were lost. And you know, and our part is to fish and give the word, and it's the Holy Spirit's job to clean them. I catch them, give them to God, and the Holy Spirit cleans them. I'm going to tell you, I never had to anybody have to rebuke me or tell me what I was doing after I was born of the Spirit of God that I'm wrong. I already knew I was. You either hide it, put on a mask and fake it, or either throw yourself in an altar somewhere and ask God to forgive you and pick back up and go on. Amen. Amen.
The vision speaks about purifying hearts through humility. Deep repentance and prayer. And fasting. Fasting is good. But fasting for God's presence is even better. Being hungry for Jesus' presence. The power of the Holy Spirit, the vision speaks, will spearhead what's coming very soon. The awakening and reformation and the revival fire that's coming. But it must begin within you and I and all of the leaders of the Ecclesia of Winston County. The Holy Spirit says that He will be the one that purifies hearts through humility, deep repentance, prayer, and fasting. And only if the body of Christ hosts His presence. The Lord said in 2018 that church services cannot and will not be the same anymore. (laughs) Can you bear witness of this now? It's not the same anymore. Worship in spirit and in truth must become prevalent. Houses of God must be restored to houses of prayer. We must let the Holy Spirit lead and be open to the gifts of the Spirit operating throughout the body of believers as we respond through a reverent fear of the Lord, obedience to His Word, and become active in our faith, prayer, and witnessing. Winston County will blaze with the fire of God within every repentant heart of every renewed follower of Jesus Christ. Are you with God in His vision? You see, together as one, we will fight this good fight of faith. It's a great fight to be in a good fight of faith. And we will do it with the sword of the Spirit and the oil of God's Spirit, the Holy Spirit. We will all become an army in which we already are. You just haven't realized it. And most of you listening today out there have not realized it. You are the kingdom of God. You are the army of God. And it is up to you and I to begin marching with the Lord with His orders today and see the great awakening that the world has never, ever seen. And how in the world would God choose a little insignificant place in which you live? A place with less than 5,000 people. Well, you read the Word of God. That's how He did everything. (laughs) He chose the insignificant things of the world to confound those that think they are so mighty and high and so intellectual about things. And I'm not talking about that it's, you know, if you have a chance to get an education and, and, and use your brain that God given you, there's nothing wrong with that. But don't depend on that for your salvation. Jesus is the only one that can save. You see, God's vision speaks of all of our past failures of what the devil meant for harm. God now will use it for good. All the trouble that you've been through, you're fixing to get double for your trouble. Well, that was about four or five of you. You're fixing to receive double for your trouble. How many wants that? Well, you've got to get active in your faith. Amen? The armor of our past is now our platform. Your personal platform and personal testimony of what Jesus has personally done for you. As you individually are called by the Lord to share with hundreds of people. Everyone is to share. Share the gospel with others. And as you become active in your faith, witnessing and imaging Jesus, we will take this land just like the Lord says. You know the problem with that? When somebody hears a vision, is that we sit back and we sit down and we say, Come on, Lord! Come on, Lord! Oh, bring it in! Usher it in! Come on, Lord, we believe that vision. Man, Pastor, that was awesome. Thank you for sharing that with the church at large. Thank you, Pastor. Oh, yeah, thank you, Pastor. When the truth is, the Lord is saying, Come on! Come on, church! Arise from your stupor! Come on, church! I've given you the power! Now rise and walk in your dominion and your authority! Did you know it's not going to happen any other way? But it's going to happen. God is just looking for a remnant. And the the choice for you today, are you going to be part of it? 
I'm going to tell you something. When it starts happening, you know what? You know, you know what? When things like this, I better stand up here. When things like this start happening, you got a remnant that's active in it. They're praying it through. I'm so thankful for our intercessors that we have here and our prayer warriors and our leaders of those teams, uh, Brother Stan and Judy, Sister Judy uh, uh, Aikens. I'm so thankful for them. It, no matter what, even if it's just them, they're always faithful to come and pray every Saturday night and every Sunday morning before the church service. But you know what's going to happen. Let me just say this, what's going to happen. God always has a remnant that's going to press through like this. They're going to take the vision and run with it. And then you got these that I've approached out here of various denominations. And their answer was either no answer, because this message was for, to them. It was for the ecclesia, the kingdom at large here in Winston County. They either said nothing, or they told me this. We're just going to sit back and wait and see what happens. Or, well, I don't think we want to be involved with that. Don't y'all speak in tongues? What does that have to do with the vision that God's given? Well, listen, it's going to happen. You see, the Lord identified His corporate church in Winston County with two mentioned in the book of Revelation. The book of, the, the book of Revelation speaks about seven churches would be defined throughout all generations. The number one church that Jesus spoke to me in this vision that said, this is what my church appears like now. But remember, it's still His church. This is not God rejecting. This is God giving a warning, but giving the solution. In other words, giving the antidote for what had made them sick. The first church was the church of Ephesus. And what happened to Ephesus, and I'll just sum it up, due to time, they had lost their first love. And Jesus basically told them, then come back to your first love. Repent and come back. It's that simple. It wouldn't jump through this hoop, that hoop, pray for 100 days, fast for 14 days or 40 days, and give, you know, $500 every week. No, he just said, repent and come back to your first love. And the second church <clears throat> was the church of Laodicea. And see, that speaks of the church of today. As a whole, the Laodicean church was neither cold or hot. And Jesus said, because you have become lukewarm, wealthy, and believe, you don't have need of nothing, including me. In other words, you can make a worship service happen. And you do it so good, you don't even need me anymore. You know what he said? He said in Revelation 3.17, Because you say, I am rich, have become wealthy, and have need of nothing, and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, and blind, and naked. Now this still is his church. He didn't say, I don't love you anymore. These were still born-again believers. He tells them, though, I counsel, verse 18, I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire that you may be rich in white garments that you may be clothed that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed and anoint your eyes with eye that you may see. You know what? Let me sum that up. Jesus was basically telling these, the, the church of Laodicea you just forgot who you are because you've left my presence and you think you don't need me. How's that working for you? Because really on the inside, they were miserable people. But they looked good. And they enjoyed the riches that they had. The Lord gave us, and I'm about to close, the vision of 2018. He gave us the assignment. Number one, and this was His assignment. It's the same today 
has not changed. We are to seek God's presence individually and corporately through deep personal repentance, prayer, fasting, and radical love for Jesus and one another. We are to repent of all sin and come back to our first love in Jesus. Number two, the assignment spoke. The Lord spoke and said, All pastors, preachers, leadership of all local churches must begin to teach, instruct, and encourage all members to begin actively living the image of Jesus and begin actively witnessing, reaching out, witnessing, and reconciling all people, no matter who they are, within Winston County. Number three, God's instruction of the vision was we are all summoned by God to actively begin sharing your personal testimony with people, praying with people, speaking life into people, and encouraging their lives with the Word of God led of Holy Spirit and lead them in the plan of salvation if they've never been born again. Number four, we were all summoned by God to share His love with every person that we meet. We must realize that God chose us as His plan A for the unsaved and the backslidden. Number five, God's vision calls to each and every one of us to reach out and develop a personal relationship with the lost, the hurting, the broken, and the backslidden. Number six, we are all are most willingly ask the Holy Spirit daily to lead us and look for an opportunity to share what Jesus has personally done for you. Number seven, we are all summoned by God to be bold and confident and to walk by faith and led by the Holy Spirit. We are all called by the Lord Himself to give all persons that we witness to a personal invitation to repent, receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And if they're not already, then invite them to church. Amen. I mean, some may say, what would you do that for? Most people don't want to come to church anyway. Did you know what? When I witness the people out here, you know what they tell me? Pastor, thank you for the invitation. I can't remember the last time anybody invited me to church. So don't use that as an excuse. Well, ain't nobody want to go to church anyway. No, because they've not seen the love of God to care enough to just invite them. Number eight is the last one. God's vision summons, summons all area churches to come together as the corporate church within the cities. Get this, pastors, preachers, all over this region. We were to come together as the corporate church, the ecclesia of God, within the cities in which we are located in Winston County. And that means Haleville, right here. Every three months for worship, prayer, fasting, partaking communion together, and loving one another. That's the assignment of the Lord. Our motivation at each of these meetings would be the love of God, love for one another, hosting the Holy Spirit present, worship and prayer. Why? Because of the need of the lost and the backslidden here. Listen to what Jesus said in John 13, 34. A new commandment I give unto you that you love one another as I have loved you also love one another by this all will know that you are my disciples if you have love toward one another how in the world can we show people that are not in the 130 churches in Winston County if we still have clubs and dividing walls among denominations in Winston County and you know what that says to them why in the world do I want to be a part of that I'm doing better than that with my friends at the bar it's a shame. I'd rather be at the backers club. They show me more love and compassion. I don't want to be a part of a denomination that fights among its own people. By this, they will know that you're my disciples if you have love toward one another. Do you love each other? Well, there's one. There's us some more. Do you love each other? Yeah. Do you really? Well, begin showing it. And I know that you do. Let's turn it up a notch or two. The last scripture verse in Habakkuk 2 and 2 and verse 3. Then the Lord answered and said to me, Write the vision and make it plain that he may run who reads it. We must run with these visions that God has given us for this appointed time. And now is the time. 
And listen to what the prophet says. For the vision is not yet for an appointed time, but at the end it will speak and it will not lie. My brothers and sisters in Christ, this is the vision. This is the end time. It is time to run with the vision. You see, running with the vision means you pick it up, you own it, and it means you're doing something by running forward with it, by obeying the Lord. And what He's given you and I is a remnant to do here. Solid Rock Church and to the corporate church of Winston County, you have been given two specific visions of the Lord. Two specific visions for your personal lives, your family, your church families, as well as for the sake and salvation and restoration of over 17,000 people in Winston County alone. God has chosen you, you and I, for such a time as this. Just as in Haggai's day, God has given you His assignment. This is a joyful assignment. This is not uh, some kind of work that, oh my God, I dread it. No, this is your joy. This is God's joy that gives you strength. It's His assignment. How will you and I respond? Would you stand to your feet? Come on, sister. I want you to think about that. This is serious. This is not the time. Unless you've got to go to work or something, this is not the time to run. This is the time to get in God's presence right now. And I want you to just bow your heads right where you are right now. Is God, I, 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 I'm allowing you, Holy Spirit, to examine my heart right now. Lord, if, and, and right now, I'm, I'm speaking this to everybody. The Bible says to make your calling and election sure. That doesn't mean if you're called to be a pastor or an apostle or an evangelist or teacher, a deacon or an elder, or a position in the church. This is mainly you examining your heart and seeing, am I truly saved? As Jesus my Lord. And then if you've strayed from God. Listen, He leaves the hope, the 99. And He goes after you. There is nothing that you could have done that would keep God from loving you. As you search your own heart this morning and listen to the Holy Spirit. Right where you're standing. If you need to repent, you just ask Him. You don't have to beg God. If you mean it from your heart, say, Lord, I've lost my way. But I hear the Holy Spirit call me and it's restoring me right now. Lord Jesus, just forgive me. Restore me and fill me fresh and anew. Baptize me once again. Or for the first time with the Holy Spirit with your fire. Because I want to be part of your vision. I want to be a part of your solution for our cities, for our county, for this region, for the state of Alabama, and for the whole United States and the world. I want to be right in the middle of your vision, of your awakening, your reformation, and the revival fire that's already been sent and it's on its way. And then... Secondly, as your heads are bowed this morning, if you've never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I pray this day that as the Holy Spirit is drawing you, I want to say this to you, my friend. Jesus Christ died for you. He was beaten, bruised, spit upon, his hair pulled out of his head, out of his beard. 39 lashes that cut him to shreds. And every drop of blood that was shed at Calvary. If you was the only person, Jesus would have come and done it for you. That's how much he loves you and he still loves you. The Bible says 
that if you confess, you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. You believe in the gospel, the death. He was buried. He died for you. He was buried for you. So that you could be buried, you could die to self and be buried in Him. And so that Holy Spirit power would come upon you and live in you so that you could live the resurrection life. What a great gift that God has given His people, the Holy Spirit. But if you believe the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, then ask Him right now. Repent of your sin. If you're still a sinner, just repent. You know who you are. I don't have to tell you. And I certainly don't judge you because you only got one judge. Ask Jesus to forgive you of your past, give you a new heart, wash away everything of your past, and you'll become a new creation. As you confess Jesus as Lord of your life, and you make him your Savior right now, I pray that you pray that prayer. The call of God is always about a renewed relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ and a refocus of eternal things that truly matter. The love of God, your families, the church family, love of one another, and love for our neighbors, and winning souls for the kingdom of God. The time is short, but the time is now. Are you prepared and ready to meet God? Are you rapture ready? If there is something that you're still holding on to and you need additional prayer I pray that you send your prayer request via Facebook or message me some way and we'll definitely pray for you but if you're not if you're here right now under the sound of my voice in this sanctuary and there's something you need to lay down at the feet of Jesus I'm asking you to come give it up to him Give it to Jesus right now as Sister Hannah is playing. And if she wants to sing something, go ahead, Sister. Come and bring it to the feet of Jesus right now. Don't wait any longer. Thank you. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can somebody give Jesus some praise in the house? Amen. He's a wonderful, wonderful Savior. I will see all of you tonight over at uh, Brother Butch and Lee Benton's house at 6 o'clock. Don't eat because they're going to have plenty of food. So we'll come together and begin. We'll eat and worship there. Yes, ma'am. Okay. reached out and I grabbed a hold of that thing and I got my blessing. Well, this is for two people in here specific and I can come straight to you, but the Lord said to do it this way. So I'm doing it this way. 8.30 a.m. this morning. Psalms 94.16 Who will stand up for me against this wicked? Who will stand up against, stand up for me against those who do iniquity? Remember this. Yesterday is gone. Let it go. Today is the first day of the rest of your blessed life. Your mountains are not to make you weak, but strong. Each step up on the mountain makes you stronger, not weaker. Because anybody who knows when you're climbing a mountain or climbing a step, if you don't give up, you keep climbing it, you've got more room and more strength to climb and take that next step. So the mountains in front of you is not to make you weaker, to make you stronger. And remember this, nothing is going to come your way that has not already received God's permission. Satan had to have permission from God to sift Job. We're no better. So everything that come in our way has already been approved of by God because he says, I know my daughter, she can handle it. I know my son, he can handle it. I know my children, they're going to go through because they have me, because I have already gave them the victory. It's to make you stronger, not weaker. Don't look on your outward appearance. No matter how you're looking at yourself today, let it drop off. Stop looking at what you're seeing with your physical eye. Your appearance on the outside is not what I'm after, says the Lord. I'm after your heart. It's a heart matter. It's the condition of your heart. It's how you are pro get, getting God into your heart that he looks at, that he accepts, that he wants. Paul had a burden. God said, my grace is sufficient for you. He did not ask for that burden to be lifted, but for the strength to go through it and carry it on. Because Paul had the secret. Jesus Christ is my strength. Jesus Christ is my wisdom. Jesus Christ is my all, my everything. Jesus is my victory. Don't ask for your mountain to be removed. See, I, the last week I was saying, Lord, remove this mountain. <laughs> Lord, I don't want to climb it no more. I don't want to go around it. I just want to go through it. And he says, my grace is sufficient. Keep climbing that mountain, daughter, because every step you take up that mountain is making you stronger and bringing you closer to me and what I have for you. God gave me also Psalms 47 over there, and it talks about the inheritance. Every single one of us has an inheritance that is here and now for us to partake of if we will just grab a hold of God. Amen. 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 Give the Lord a clap hand of praise for that. Okay, remember youths. Y'all have lunch out in the pews for you right now. God bless you. I'm going to release you all now, and I'll see you tonight at uh, Butch and Lee's house at 6 o'clock. God bless you all. You're released. Go enjoy, Utes. We'll see.